This channel is dedicated to chemical engineers. Skeletric Pulse Engineering Consultant is happy to be associated with this knowledge sharing initiative. Hello everyone, greetings from Skeletric Process Engineering. Welcome to the part 2 of the two part series in centrifugal pump sizing and selection. The part 1 of the series dealt with sizing of centrifugal pump in detail and we enhanced our understanding through a real world solved problem. The sizing will help you to make the presentation of the pump without which you cannot approach a pump manufacturer to make the request and get an inquiry for supply of pump. Like in the purchase of any other product, we would like to get offers from two or more suppliers so that you can select the pump most suited to your service application. The learning outcome of this presentation is to get an insight into the factors to be considered while evaluating and selecting the right pump. Listen to the narration carefully as we read the subject matter in each slide. Okay, let us get started now. The part two of sizing and selection of centrifugal pump covers broadly four aspects in pump selection. These are important technical aspects that need to be understood to gain knowledge in the pump evaluation and selection process. These aspects are pump data sheet and characteristics, best efficiency point, minimum flow requirement, NPSH required, suction specific speed. Pump data sheet and pump characteristics. The pump selection process starts with these two documents. The documents contain several useful information. Let us understand how they are useful in the pump evaluation process. Selecting the right pump for the right job is the key objective in evaluating the technical offers from the pump manufacturers. The pump data sheet is the reference document used for the evaluation because the pump manufacturers develops a pump design based on the technical data provided in the document. The two documents used for the pump selection process or pump data sheet developed by the user and issued to the pump supplier. Pump performance characteristic received from the pump supplier. Pump curves help to select the right pump for your service application. Let us discuss the factors that will have an impact on the two above aspects. Pump data sheet, also known as specification sheet, is an expression of system requirements and contains process design data related to operating parameters and properties of the liquid handled. The operation related parameters included in the data sheet are volumetric flow rate, 
total differential hit in psh available total working pressure minimum flow requirement capacity control methods properties of fluid handled by the pump has significant impact on the pump sizing and selection liquid properties to be specified should include liquid composition pump inlet temperature vapor pressure at suction temperature density viscosity solid content if any and flammability pump characteristics provide the engineering data related to mechanical aspects of the pump and include pump design parameters and other mechanical and engineering aspects of the pump system among the pump design parameters important from the process requirement and pump reliability viewpoint or impeller diameter npsh required pump efficiency minimum flow of operation and pump speed the other mechanical design aspects of the pump offer should include material of the pump impeller and casing what's the type of seal whether you need a mechanical seal or you need a sealless pump safety interlocks lubrication requirement and the type of bearing cooling no two pump supplier will offer the same type of pump design the pump performance and mechanical design aspects of the pump offered by one supplier will be different from that of another supplier hence the technical data of pumps received from each manufacturer needs to be evaluated and compared the key focus on the evaluation of the pump characteristics is to select a pump that meets the process duty that is efficient that is reliable and delivers trouble free performance having understood what technical data are required for evaluating the pump let us now turn our attention to the key parameters that are important from the performance and stability view point the four important design aspects to be considered are best efficiency point minimum flow requirement net positive suction head required suction specific speed let us go back to the same example we considered for pump sizing in the part 1 of the series we will put together the process specifications in the form of a table for evaluation table 1 2 and 3 will give you a glimpse of how uh, we assemble all the data for our evaluation process shown in this figure is a connected pump system that was considered for pump sizing in our worked example the data from the specification or process data sheet and the pump mechanical data sheet are put together 
to compare and evaluate the pumps so that we can make our final pump selection. Assume that you have received offer from two pump suppliers. The following four tables show how the two pumps compare in their process and mechanical design aspects. This example is taken just to give an idea about the technical aspects that are important to make the final choice. This table captures the key process parameters which include volumetric flow rate, total head developed, total differential head, pump efficiency, brake valve power, NPSHA available, NPSHA required and design pressure of the pump. The table presented in this slide captures key process parameters which include pumping temperature, density, vapor pressure, viscosity, flow control means and pump location stroke environment. The table shown here captures key mechanical and drive aspects. The drive, type of drive, speed, type of sealing, safety protection, material construction of the impeller, material construction of the casing. The table shown in this slide captures some additional mechanical aspects. Pump model, impeller diameter, maximum impeller diameter and minimum flow requirement. In the fourth table shown, we have circled some data in red color. These data need closer scrutiny and analysis. They have significant impact on pump performance. We will understand the significance in the following slides. Simply called BEP, the best efficiency point is an important factor to be considered in the pump selection. What is the significance of BEP and how do we use it as a tool to study and compare the pump curves and select the right pump? Come, let us understand it now. BEP is a measure of optimum energy conversion. When sizing and selecting centrifugal pumps for a given application, the pump efficiency at design should be taken into consideration. The efficiency of centrifugal pumps is stated as a percentage. It represents a unit of measure describing the change of centrifugal force expressed as the velocity of the fluid into pressure energy. The best efficiency point is the area on the curve where the change of velocity energy into pressure energy at a given capacity is optimum. In other words, BEP is the point where the pump is most efficient. Before we discuss the BEP in detail, it is time to note as to how pumps are offered to the users. Your pump carries a model number which is the indication of the pump or casing size. Your pump with a given casing can be fitted 
with a range of impellers with different diameters. The manufacturer selects the model and impeller size based on the user specification. The efficiency of the pump varies with the impeller diameter chosen in a given pump. This information is important to understand the pump characteristics. This figure illustrates the pump performance curves with the different impeller diameters and best efficiency points. Note that the HQ curve varies with changes in diameter. Three curves are shown in red color. The curve at the top is for 200 mm dia. The curve in the middle is for 175 mm dia. The curve at the bottom is for 150 mm dia. Higher the dia, higher the head and capacity. All the three curves shown are for a given speed. The green color line are constant efficiency lines. As the diameter size increases, the best efficiency decreases. The impeller with the 200 mm dia has the maximum best efficiency point. The desirable impeller selection area is shown in blue color. The pump selected in this area will have maximum BEP. BEP is a measure of mechanically stable operation. The impeller is subject to non-symmetrical forces when operating to the right or left of the BEP. These forces manifest themselves in many mechanically unstable conditions like vibration, excessive hydraulic thrust, temperature rise and erosion. An increase in the temperature of the process fluid in the pump casing causes seizure of close tolerance spots and, and cavitation. Sustained excess velocity and turbulence will result in vortexes which can create cavitation damage capable of damaging the pump casing, backplate and the impeller in a very short span of operation. Performance in these areas induces premature bearing and mechanical seal failures due to shaft deflection. Thus, the operation of a centrifugal pump should not be outside the farthest left or right of the BEP published by the manufacturer. Most users prefer to operate within 80 to 110 percent of BEP for optimum performance. Maximum efficiency is achieved when we select the largest possible impeller diameter for a given pump casing. Study the pump performance curve and check where does the operating point fall on the HQ curve. If it falls within 80% to 110% of BEP, then the diameter selected will deliver optimum performance. I would like to once again highlight that operating the pumps far away from BEP and transient operating conditions has detrimental impact on the pumps. This emphasizes the importance of making proper pump specification and selection. If the specified data point is located in the overload region that is close to runoff point, the selected pump 
is too small in capacity. If the specified rated point is too close to the shutoff head, the selected pump is very large in capacity. In either case, the pump selection is poor. A rough thumb rule is that the rated capacity should not fall below 65% of BEP flow. Failures of many critical parts of the pumps such as bearings, seals, etc. can be traced to the pump operation at points relatively far from the BEP point. The overall reliability of the pump goes down when operated outside the recommended operating limits. Having understood the importance of BEP in relation to the duty point as a criteria for selecting a centrifugal pump, we will now consider another criteria for pump selection, minimum flow requirement. When you operate a centrifugal pump, the flow rate has to be maintained above a certain minimum quantity to prevent undesirable consequences to the pump due to unstable operation it will experience when operated below this limit. Let us now understand when does your pump delivery flow go well below the normal operating flow. There are two occasions when the pump will experience low flow situations. The first one is when the pump is started up. The other one is when the flow is regulated to meet the process demand either by control valve throttling or by the use of VFD variable frequency drive. The pump is normally started up with the discharge valve closed. From shutoff condition, the flow is established by opening the discharge valve to fill the piping system up to the flow control valve. A shock wave is generated during this process, which transmits the energy back right up to the upstream of the pump. This is demonstrated in the figure on the left. The energy of the shock wave is a function of head developed, volume of the liquid and the specific gravity and has the potential to damage pump bearing and impeller. The pump will not always operate at its duty point. There are several occasions when the flow through the pump will vary depending on the process demand. In addition, transient conditions as well as control system disturbances will make the flow control valve to close. The pump running below a minimum flow condition will have undesirable consequences. As per API, there are two definitions related to the pump minimum flow. A minimum continuous stable flow. This is the lowest flow at which the pump can operate without exceeding vibration limits. The second definition is minimum continuous thermal flow. 
this is the lowest flow at which the pump can operate without its operation being impaired by the temperature rise of the pump fluid. This uh, figure illustrates the effect of minimum flow on the pump performance. As discussed before, the desired operating range is 80 to 100 percent of BEP flow. That is the ideal selection zone. It is not desirable to select a pump with a duty point which is less than 65 percent of BEP flow. Three phenomena will occur as the pump operation continues and the flow reduces progressively below 65 percent. They are suction recirculation, discharge recirculation and high temperature of the pumped fluid. All the three conditions has negative impact on the pump operation and stability. The exact flow rate at which these conditions occur is dependent on the design of the impeller at the inlet and exit with the inlet design impacting the suction recirculation and exit design impacting the discharge recirculation. The minimum flow control is a bypass system whereby an estimated fixed minimum flow is maintained by recirculating a part of the discharge back to the suction. Several factors will affect the minimum flow requirement. These include factors related to the pump as well as the system design. Notable among these factors are temperature rise within the pump, hydraulic design of the pump, control valve location. First, let us consider the temperature rise within a pump. Temperature rise within a pump is an important parameter to be considered while determining the minimum flow requirement. When operated away from its design flow or best efficiency point flow, inefficient operation results in heat being added to the fluid as it travels through the pump. At extremely low flow, the heat added would raise the temperature to the boiling point of the liquid corresponding to the suction pressure, which will result in the formation of vapor pocket within the pump. This will cause the pump to vapor lock and affect the stable operation. Thus the minimum continuous thermal flow is that which will be sufficient to carry the heat added to the liquid so that the temperature remains well below the boiling point. The temperature rise at low flow operation depends on the head, heat capacity and efficiency at the low flow condition. Lower the flow rate, higher the head developed, lower the pump efficiency and higher the temperature rise. Having understood the effect of very low flow on temperature rise, let us turn our focus on what is recirculation and how does it affect the pump performance. Recirculation is defined as a flow reversal either at the inlet or at the outlet tip of the impeller vanes. This reversal causes a vortex 
that attaches itself to the processor side of the veins. If there is enough energy available and the velocities are high enough, damage will occur. There are two types of recirculation which may occur together or separately in the pump. Suction recirculation and discharge recirculation. Let us discuss each of them in detail. Suction recirculation is a condition created by operating the pump at low flows and it sets the low flow limit of stable operation of the pump in relation to the percentage of BEP. It is usually referred to as the minimum flow for stable operating condition. Suction recirculation is characterized by the reversal of flow or the impeller ray. It produces noise and cavitation in the suction of the pump. How it occurs is shown in the sketch on the left. A part of the flow is directed out of the eye at the eye diameter and moves upstream with the rotational velocity approaching the peripheral velocity of the eye diameter. This produces a rotating annulus of liquid upstream from the impeller inlet and through the core of this annulus passes an axial flow corresponding to the output capacity of the pump. The high shear rate between the rotating annulus and the axial flow through the core produces vortices that form and collapse. Another problem the pump experiences in low flow operation is discharge recirculation. Discharge recirculation is created by low flow operation that occurs at a lower flow than suction recirculation. Discharge recirculation occurs when high pressure flow streams re-enter the impeller on the low pressure side of the impeller vein as shown in the figure on the left side. The reverse flow within the impeller passage shares across outgoing flow, produce vortices along the pressure wall of the impeller and causes cavitation along the pressure wall and shrouds adjusted to the impeller outlet. Minimum flow control eliminates suction recirculation, discharge recirculation and temperature rise in the pump. Two types of minimum flow control systems are generally used in the process industries. One, a bypass line fitted with a fixed orifice flow element. Two, a bypass line fitted with a closed loop independent control system. The continuous minimum flow bypass with restriction or phase control system is shown in this figure. A bypass line fitted with a fixed or phase flow element recirculates a predetermined minimum flow from the discharge back to the suction. As long as the pump is in operation, the minimum flow is maintained. It is recommended to return the minimum flow back to the suction vessel. There is no control system involved in this scheme, but the power consumption will be slightly higher to the extent of the additional flow in the bypass. The pump has to be slightly oversized for this additional continuous minimum flow over and above the flow required by the process.
The second system is the continuous recirculation scheme with the minimum flow control wall as shown in this figure. A bypass flow control recirculates a minimum flow from the discharge back to the section. This is a closed loop control system with independent flow metering. Even if the main process flow control wall gets closed due to process disturbance, the pump will still run meeting the minimum flow requirement. That is to say, the minimum flow control loop works independently of the main process flow control wall. The bypass flow with separate control wall system is applied in large capacity pumps in refineries and petrochemical industries. Now let us come to the third most important criteria to be considered in the selection of centrifugal pump, NPSH required. When discussing centrifugal pumps, the two most important head terms are MPSH available and NPSH required. Understanding the significance of NPSH is very much essential during selection, installation as well as operation of the pumps. Pumps can pump only liquids, not vapors. The satisfactory operation of a pump requires that the vibration of the liquid being pumped does not occur at any conditions of operation. This is so desired because when a liquid vaporizes, its volume increases very much. Hence, the pump must be free of vapors if it has to pump effectively. The vaporization begins when the vapor pressure of the liquid at the operating temperature equals the system pressure. Any decrease in system pressure or increase in operating temperature can induce vaporization and the pump stops pumping. So how do you prevent this? Have a sufficient amount of suction head present at the lowest pressure point in the pump to prevent this vaporization. This figure illustrates how the pressure varies from the suction line to the eye of the impeller. As the liquid passes from the suction to the eye of the impeller, the velocity increases and the pressure decreases. There are also pressure losses due to shock and turbulence as the liquid strikes the impeller. Centrifugal force of the impeller veins further increases the velocity and decreases the pressure of the liquid. All these pressure losses contribute to drop in system pressure at the impeller eye and the bubble formation is a possibility if the net suction head is not sufficient. The pump manufacturer usually tests the pump with water at different capacities by throttling the suction side. When the first signs of appreciation inducing cavitation occur, the suction pressure is noted. This pressure is converted into head. This head number is published on the pump curve and is referred to as the net positive suction head required. This figure illustrates how in spite of reduction in pressure at the suction line, net positive head is available at the eye of the impeller to prevent the bubble formation. The term net refers to the actual pressure head at the pump section flange and not the static section head. NPSHR is a function of the pump design and is determined based on actual pump test by the vendor. The pump performance curve illustrates 
the NPSHR as a function of capacity. The NPSHR required varies with speed and capacity for any particular pump. Any time the capacity and hence the velocity of the liquid goes up, the pressure or head comes down. It is to be noted that the net positive suction head required shown on the pump curves is for the fresh water at 20 degrees centigrade and not for the liquid or combination of liquid being pumped. The net positive head required for the pumped fluid should be calculated while evaluating the pump performance. The NPSH available must always be greater than the NPSH required for the pump to operate properly. It is normal practice to have at least 0.6 to 1.2 meters of extra NPSH available at the suction flange to avoid any problems at the duty point. The fourth important criteria in the selection of centrifugal pump is the suction specific speed. Suction specific speed is mainly used to see if there will be problems with cavitation during the pump operation on the suction side. We normally discuss two specific speeds when dealing with centrifugal pumps pump section speed NS and suction specific speed NSS. Pump specific speed NS is applied to the discharge state of the pump. The suction specific speed NSS is applied to the suction side of the pump. We will restrict our discussion in this presentation to suction specific speed NSS. Suction specific speed is a measure of pump's suction capability as it relates to the net positive suction head required. It is expressed as a function of NPSH required as given in the equation here. NSS is calculated from the pump's maximum diameter and its best efficiency point flow. The NSS will define the range of operation in which the pump will experience stable operation. The pump variation or the operating range is a strong function of NSS. The higher the pump suction specific speed, the smaller the range of stable operation beyond which the pump experiences cavitation. That is the reason you must include NSS of the pump in your pump selection criteria. Lower NPSHR is preferable because it reduces installation cost by smaller pipework, lower tank elevation, which in turn leads to less excavation. For a given speed and BEP flow, higher value of NSS is obtained with low NPSHR. Hence, it may seem appropriate that higher suction specific speed is better. The easiest way to reduce the NPSHR is to reduce the inlet velocity by increasing the inlet area. This however results in higher minimum flow requirement for the pump and not a good idea for all situations. The common approach is to keep the NSS 
in the range of 126 to 213 in metric unit. When it turns out that the selected pump does not meet the NSS criteria, a spillback or recirculation line may be added to meet the minimum flow requirement. Section specific speed tells us how aggressive is the pump inlet design. In other words, how low is the NPSHR for a given pump speed and BEP flow rate. Higher NSS means a lower NPSHR and therefore greater NPSH margin. NSS is also an indicator of section speed at which section recirculation starts in a pump that affects the pump's reliability. Pumps with the higher values of section specific speed typically have narrower reliable operation zone. Thus, NSS serves as a useful yardstick for selecting a pump from more than one pump manufacturers or suppliers. With this, we have come to the end of the presentation on selection of centrifugal pump. Also come to an end is a two-part series of sizing and selection of centrifugal pump. Hope this presentation with the narration and animation was useful. Please forward your comments if any at info at skilltechprocessengineering.com. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professionals and students who are desirous of developing job oriented skills and enhancing the knowledge base. Subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. Thank you for watching.